Hey there, this is Duckle from LomanCentral.com and welcome to the Duo Crota Zen Guide. This raid is labeled as an advanced difficulty raid on our scale, so make sure you're used to lomaning and have done a lot of them. It's highly recommended to understand how the trio of this raid plays out, since we assume you're familiar with the mechanics. Having raid armor is helpful, but it's not necessary at all. Loadouts for each encounter will be listed in the description since damage loadouts usually change every season. This guide is best experienced by using guides on our site since you will be able to see the 3D model of the map while listening to it. Make sure to subscribe and like the video since we'll be dropping guides for all omens in the game so you'll never miss them. Without further ado, let's get started with the first encounter. Before talking about the strategy, it's extremely important to understand how the preserve spot RNG works in order to go fast. All of the lamps are grouped, so let's take a look at the first set of lamps as an example. There are three lamps in this group. If the first lamp has the chalice preserve spot, the other two won't have it and they can be fully skipped. Since we understand how the chalice RNG functions, let's talk about the actual strategy. You won't enlighten any of the lamps, but instead, you'll only be preserving the chalice. If you've ever done the one-time triumph for this encounter, it's literally the same thing but with two people. When you arrive at a preserve spot, don't preserve immediately. You should wait for the timer to be full, and when there are 3 seconds left before you die, you should dunk it. This is done so your teammate can lose the Drained of Light debuff and pick up the chalice without waiting. The best way to navigate around the maze is with strand tangles and grapple points which you can create with the navigator. If you're wiping because you're not fast enough and don't have enough time, you can run raid armor with the mod brimming with exhaustion. For each equipped piece of this mod, your drained of light timer will be lowered down by 2 seconds. When you get to the final plate, make one player enlightened which will activate the plate and the other should preserve the chalice for the last time. Remember that there are unstoppable ogre champions here, so make sure you can stun them. After the small bridge is built, cross to the next encounter. This encounter is extremely long in this duo. Since there aren't three players to spawn the sword bearer, you'll need to spawn him without wiping to the plate. Before explaining that, you'll need at least one strand warlock running the wanderer aspect in order to cross over and back. Every player in the encounter should be on strand. Decide which player will be doing the sword. That player will be doing the starting side middle plate. Once the encounter begins, make that player enlightened and he will deposit it in the starter plate and immediately get off. The player that grabbed the chalice off of him will cross to the other side and preserve the chalice and the other player will come with him as well in order to get enlightened again. Here's a reminder of the lineups for crossing back and forth. Stand here and throw the tangle above the Crota symbol as high as you can. To get back, hop on this rock, aim as high as you can where the middle tower is on the opposite side and you should be good to go. Once you get over, wait out the timer and the player that's doing the sword will pick up the chalice and get enlightened again. The other player will take it off of him and preserve. Once the sword player gets enlightened, he will cross back to the starter side. Now, let's talk about how to spawn the sword bear. Have a player step on the middle plate on one of the sides and once they hear this noise, they will get off. You can also look at one of the totems to figure out when to get off. There's a circle on both totems that's becoming bigger when you're standing on the middle plate. Once it reaches the biggest size, it will play that noise and you'll need to get off or you will wipe. When one player gets off of his plate, the other player will get on his plate that's on the opposite side. Both players will repeat this rotation until the sword bearer spawns. It usually takes from 4 to 6 rotations for him to spawn. The sword player will kill the sword bearer and grab the sword. The player that's on the ending side will cross back to the starter side, so the sword player can grapple to his tangle to cross to the ending side. Once both of you cross, the sword player will kill the gatekeeper. The other player should run tractor cannon and a healing rift in order to make killing the gatekeeper easy, fast and safe. You'll be repeating this cycle 4 more times since there are 5 gatekeepers you need to kill. Take note that as the encounter progresses, there will be barrier champions that are very deadly 
and can be annoying when doing the plate mechanic, so make sure to have something to stun them and kill them. Once you kill the 5th gatekeeper, stay on the ending side and get one player enlightened again. Clear the adds and the ogres will spawn. Once you kill the ogres, the remaining gatekeepers will spawn. Blind them with tractor and kill all of them and you'll be done with this encounter. Like the trio for this raid, you'll be blinking through the barriers in order to lower down the witches. The blink jump can only be done on Arc Hunter or Void Warlock, so run the class you're most comfortable with. Both players have a hard job, the blinking player can't mess up the blink, and the titan player needs to cook your youth when doing damage. The other player that's not blinking should be a strand titan running Banner of War and Navigator, as well as Tractor Cannon. Since ammo isn't a huge problem for the titan, he might want to help out with lowering down the witches. He can bait them to the door by shooting at it and damage them with a lasting impression rocket launcher in order to make them finishable. If the witches are close to the door, you can also shoot another lasting impression rocket in order to kill them if they're far away once you're ready to head into DPS. In my experience, the hardest rooms to blink into are the top left and the top right room. So, you should do other witches first, before heading into these in case you lose Enlightened. If you still have Enlightened when damage starts, you'll need to expunge your youth and get rid of it. This is done because it sometimes bugs out and you can't blink through the barriers with Enlightened buff from the last witch phase. The Titan player should prioritize doing rooms on the middle side because he needs to shoot the navigator point and set up his strand rotation properly. You should ideally one phase or two phase ear you. I left a video of a solo one phase ear you in the description if you're not sure how to do strand titan cook rotation. Once you wrap her up, it's time to face Crota. Since you can't make two players enlightened at the same time, you'll need to swap with the oversoul player at the end of doing DPS in order not to wipe. Raid armor here is helpful but not required. Start by assigning the sword and an oversoul player. The titan should always do the oversoul. When the encounter starts, the sword player will get enlightened and the other player will preserve the chalice. Once ready, the sword player will go and lower down Crota's shield. It's important that the titan player debuffs Crota with tractor cannon as well as provide woven mail or healing with banner of war to the sword player when breaking. Let's look at the best way to sword Crota. Start with a heavy attack. Do another heavy attack. As soon as you see the numbers of the second heavy attack pop up, use the super since this will skip the animation. As soon as you can, do the last heavy attack. It's also important that you're sorting Crota on an even surface because sometimes the super animation thinks you're jumping and it takes a while. Ideally, you should do 70 to 90% of your shield health with the first sword since you'll be doing two swords anyway. Once you lose Drain of Light, grab the Chalice and get enlightened again. The Titan player should also insta-kill the Boomer Knights on both towers, as well as finisher the Sword Bearer with Aeons for heavy ammo. Once you obtain the second sword, you'll need to figure out on which side you're going to do damage to Crota. There are five spots on the map where you can swap the Chalice of Light. Two on the left, one on top, one on bottom, two on the right, one on top, one on bottom, and one in middle, which is in the bottom. If the next swap point is on the left, you'll be doing damage on left, and if it's on right, you'll be doing damage on the right side. If it's in the middle, which is the worst RNG, you can do damage on any side you like. Since you're running Bequest, you'll need to be surrounded, so leave ads alive and do damage to Crota in the center of one of the side bridges. Also, make sure to kill the Boomer Knights on the side where you're doing damage, so you don't get killed by them when doing damage. In order to bait Crota in the place where you want him to, you need to understand how he is programmed. If you are behind cover, he will push you. If you are in the open, where he can see you, he will start backing out and start shooting at you. The sword player usually stands in one of the towers to get him to move to a good position. Once Crota is in a good position, the Titan player will grab the chalice and build up his stacks for his warm gods. He will also bait the adds below the boss for surrounded. On Titan's call, break Crota's shield and start doing damage. 
Once the timer hits 7 to 8 seconds, you'll need to leave in order to swap with the player that's doing Oversoul. The Sword player will take it off of him and preserve the Chalice. The Titan player will break the Oversoul. There's a tech where the player can expunge and break the Oversoul at the same time, but only do this if you're struggling with hitting damage. Repeat this for the next two phases. Ideally, you should make Crota very low HP before heading into final damage phase. The final stand is where this encounter is especially hard since you need to cook him very fast. There's a bug with the Oversoul, where even if you kill him, it will still wipe you. In order to dodge this, you'll need to kill Crota before 6 seconds left on the second Oversoul timer. In case this goes wrong and you die in a flawless run, you should check if the mission complete popped up before you died. This is because in the API, deaths aren't counted after mission complete so you might get a flawless run even though you've died. And that should be it. Make sure to like and subscribe since that helps us a lot. You can also support the project by subscribing to Loman Central Pro on our site and you'll get awesome benefits in return. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.